Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, we are going to be answering menstrual cycle questions from previous question papers. And I saw a few comments on the previous video that I posted and a few of you guys have been asking where I get my question papers. So I use two websites guys, most of the time. I use test papers and SA exam papers. Those are the two websites that I use to access um, the question papers. These are both provincial and national papers. What you can also do, uh, which is very nice, is you can download these question papers and try them out yourself. Um, they also have memos, guys, and these are approved uh, memos. So they also have memos. So attempt the question, then mark yourself using the memo. In this video, I'll probably have about three questions um, that I will go through. So please do watch the video till the end, guys. And if you, have, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please kindly do subscribe, like this video, share it with your classmates and also your schoolmates. Okay. Um, let's look at this first question. This is a very popular um, diagram or graph when it comes to um, the menstrual cycle, especially, obviously, assessing you guys about the, the hormone levels um, over the 28 days of the menstrual cycle. So let's go through it. Um, so study the diagrams. Let me get a color. Study the diagrams and graphs below which show the hormonal regulation of um, the female reproductive cycle. Now, when you look at this diagram, you have to analyze it first before you even check the questions, right? So what you're having here is the hormonal regulation of the female reproductive cycle. And from here um, at the bottom, we are having the number of days from day zero to day 28, okay? Now, the first block over here, we are given the thickness or we're shown the thickness of the uterine lining or the endometrium. So analyze and see what is happening. We can see that the endometrium is breaking down uh, on this section from day zero to day seven. And we can see that it starts to thicken just after day seven and it continues to thicken after day 14. Now, the second section it's basically showing us the different levels of the ovarian hormones. Now, there's two ovarian hormones, guys. These are hormones that are secreted by the ovaries. Now, the hormones that are secreted by the ovaries is the estrogen and progesterone. Now, you are then having two graphs here showing you the levels of the ovarian hormones. Before you even look at the questions, you should be able to analyze and determine which graph is representing sorry which graph is representing estrogen and which graph is representing progesterone now from just looking at the graph we should be able to determine or to even identify and say that um graph four the one that is numbered four is estrogen estrogen because we can see that um it starts to increase just after day seven, it starts to increase just after day seven. And that is obviously because of the growing follicles, because we know that this hormone, estrogen, is secreted by the growing follicles. So we can see that the follicles are growing and they start to secrete hormone estrogen, hence the high levels or hence the levels of estrogen increasing in the blood. Okay, then it starts to decrease just after day 14. Now, we can also identify that hormone number five is progesterone. Progesterone. And this is the hormone that gets secreted by the corpus luteum, and it all happens after day 14. Now, this is the hormone that basically forms a mountain shape just after day 14. It increases. Now, what happens from day 22 to day 28 is determined by whether fertilization takes place or not. Now, if fertilization does not take place, obviously, the graph is going to decrease. And if fertilization takes place, the graph will um, increase. Okay, so easy piece of stuff. I think I'm over explaining, but anyways. 
Um, then we are having the growth of the follicle. This part is showing us that the follicle is growing from primary, secondary, up until we have our graphian follicle. Ovulation takes place. Then we have our corpus luteum. Pituitary hormones, we are having the later hormones. That's your LH and FSH. The one that peaks around day 14 is obviously LH. So that means uh, hormone number two is LH. Then the one that increases just at the beginning of the menstrual cycle is FS. Wow, 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 wowsies, wowsies, wowsies. FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. All right, then let's look at the questions. Give the number for two marks. Give the number and name of the hormone that stimulates the development of the follicle. That is easy. So the number from the graph, it's number one. So that is number one. And the name of the hormone is follicle stimulating hormone. Remember, you can just write FSH and you'll get a mark. Okay. So you'll then write the number and then the name of the hormone. Easy piece of stuff. Then... Uh, two one one B. Give the name and hormone. Wow. Give the number and the name. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's one of those days. Sorry. Give the number and name of the hormone that maintains the endometrium between day seven and fourteen. The name of the hormone that maintains the endometrium. There is the endometrium that maintains it between day seven and day fourteen. That is the oestrogen hormone. As we can see, the oestrogen hormone levels increase from day uh, 7 to 14. It is basically increasing in the blood. And that obviously uh, starts uh, thickening or that will cause the thickening of the endometrium. So the number. Okay. The next question, explain for two marks. Now explain the function of the corpus luteum. Now, let us remind ourselves that this is the corpus luteum. This is the structure, the yellow body, that is basically an empty graphene follicle because during ovulation, the graphene follicle will rupture to release the ovum, the mature ovum, into the fallopian tube. Then the LH will then stimulate the conversion of this graphene follicle, which is empty, to then have it as the corpus luteum. And this corpus luteum secretes progesterone. Now, the question is asking us to explain. It will be a cause and effect kind of an answer. Now, the function of the corpus luteum is to secrete the hormone progesterone. Secrete progesterone. Something is happening with my pen, but let me see. Is to secrete progesterone. Now, what will this progesterone do? So this progesterone is going to maintain the endometrium. So you don't just say it secretes progesterone and you leave it there. The significance of the progesterone being secreted will be to maintain the endometrium. Hence, let's go back to the diagram. So the presence of the corpus luteum will obviously cause the levels of progesterone in the blood to increase. When the levels of progesterone in the blood increase, we can see that the thickness levels of the endometrium also increase. So that is that. That is that. Three marks. Describe. Describe how the corpus luteum is formed for three marks. Now, let me just show you how this question would be marked. So here, one mark, one mark, name, a number there, it will be to secrete progesterone in order to maintain the endometrium, yeah. Which color is it? I think it's that one. All right, now we need to describe, guys, and what I'm noticing um, with learners most of the time, whenever you guys come across one or two mark questions, you, you attempt to answer. But as soon as you see a question with a mark allocation of three, four, and five, you just leave an empty space. Why are you doing that? Please don't leave empty spaces, guys. There is no need. Please don't leave empty spaces. Attempt to answer each and every question. Um, you need to describe how the corpus luteum is formed. This is very, very easy. Remember, the corpus luteum gets formed just after day 14. So what normally happens is that high levels of oestrogen in the blood will stimulate 
the pituitary gland to secrete hormone LH. Now, high levels of LH in the blood will stimulate ovulation, meaning will stimulate the graphene follicle to rupture and release the ovum. It will also stimulate the conversion of this ruptured graphene follicle to become a corpus luteum. That's how it's formed. It is actually formed by high levels of LH in the blood. So now how do we write the whole answer? You then say the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland secretes LH. The pituitary gland secretes LH, which is the luteinizing hormone. And this hormone is going to stimulate. LH will then stimulate the conversion the conversion of the ruptured graphene follicle of the ruptured graphene follicle into the corpus luteum. Simple stuff. Let me show you how this would be marked. The pituitary gland, you are telling us the gland is going to secrete hormone LH, which will stimulate the conversion of the ruptured graphene follicle into the corpus luteum. The tick is at the end. All right, easy peasy stuff. Uh, last question, two, one, three. Give two visible reasons using the information from the diagrams. Using the information from the diagrams and graphs above to explain why the woman is not pregnant. Um, the giveaway is the progesterone level. The progesterone level starts to decrease. We can see that the progesterone levels, let me change my color. The progesterone levels start to decrease here. And the reason for the progesterone levels decreasing is because of the corpus luteum. That is starting to degenerate here because if there's no fertilization, the corpus luteum degenerates. So that means um, obviously there's no structure that uh, is secreting progesterone or the progesterone levels in the blood will obviously decrease because the corpus luteum is degenerating. Um, another reason that you can talk about here is the follicle stimulating hormone. Let's look at the graph for follicle stimulating hormone. We can see that it is starting to increase. So another reason is that the follicle stimulating hormone graph, which we can see here, is starting to increase around day 27, day 28. And we know that a follicle stimulating hormone will stimulate the growth of a follicle. So that is basically telling us that there is uh and another cycle that is starting so from here day 28 we'll have another cycle that starts from day zero today then have our day 28 okay all right let's go to the next question 